everyone, I am Argama Witch and welcome to part two of So You Want to Be a VTuber. This time we are going to be talking about characters, software, and hardware. This video will be rather long as there's a lot that goes into each of these and there are many levels of it. It all depends on how deep you want to dive into the VTuber life and how much money you want to invest in it, be it zero dollars to ten thousand. I get asked this question so often and there's no easy answer to this. There are so many variables that would change the minimum specs needed, as much as it changes from game to game, the specs of your PC needs. But I'm going to give you the base need for streaming, assuming you'll be streaming with the minimum use of a PNG. The following information was researched by my husband, the person who built my PC and works with computers for a living. You're married? Yes, I'm married. Bah. For the internet, for 720p at 30 frames a second, you'll need an upload speed of at least 3 to 5 megabits per second. For 1080p at 60 frames, you'll need at least 8 to 10. Twitch lies when it suggests 6 megabits per second. That's far too low for good quality at 8, uh, 1080 at 60 frames a second. Recommended operating system is Windows 10, but you might be able to get away with Windows 7. For memory, a minimum of 8 gigabytes, but heavily recommended 16 or more. For the processor, an Intel Core i5 class processor or better, or an AMD Ryzen series processor. Something older might work, but you want something that has at least 4 cores and can handle 8 threads and runs at least 3 gigahertz. Built-in Intel graphics cards should work okay at bare minimum your choice of game will largely determine the graphic card needed. You'll only need a video capture card if you're capturing console games. Now that I quickly touched on that, let's take a quick sidestep before we come back to programs and their specs. Keep in mind, I will post system requirements for programs if I can find them. If I don't know them, I can't post them. And for those curious, I'll post my own computer specs and programs I run at the end of the segment. It does and doesn't. If you're already coming into it with an audience, chances are it doesn't matter. But if you're starting out new, it does. First and foremost, the quality is always more appealing than something slapdash together without any real thought put into it. The well-endowed anime women, milfs, and lolly style designs seem to do the best overall. But keep in mind there's a good chance that these types of characters will be looted by fans, whether you want them to or not. Also, particularly in overly detailed characters do very well as well, and traditionally be shown. But this is more if you're looking to aim for that popularity, and it doesn't guarantee it. No matter how good your model is, if you're dull as a rock, your fan base will be limited as well. You also need to consider, does your model reflect you? Does it fit your personality and your voice? Does it fit the character you want to play? If you decide to even play a character, in which keeping in character can be quite a challenge unto itself. Do you want a model that's more representative of you as a person and more of a casual tire without theme or lore or background? This is fitting for those that are doing it for fun without having any of that uncanny valley aspect to it. Do you want a character that is nothing like you but you just like it? This could be a guy who wants to use a female model because they're cute or a lolly model but might have a very mature voice. These styles might be off-putting at first. It hits an uncanny valley note as the voice and characters don't match. Think of watching a cartoon and the casting was terrible and you reel from the voice that doesn't fit. I get this from shows that have adult men playing young or teenage boys and the deep voice is like, whoa, what the fuck? You want more, huh? So I had people in Jersey for me. Uh, but I'm sure you get used to it and as mentioned above, unless you have an audience and growing one from scratch, um, it will be particularly hard this way unless you're charismatic as fuck. If you are unsure of what you want to do for a design, you can hire an artist to help you. I have helped design characters based off of their personality. It requires me to get to know them for a bit and see what kind of person they are, hear their voice, etc. Or you can also just tell them the vibes you're looking for or your themes. Keep in mind not all artists are comfortable doing this, but there are some that are willing to help you when it comes to design. If you want to come up with one yourself, you can try something like Pit Crew or Karami, uh, which are anime dolls that allow you to do different characters but are limited in choices. 
Then you can take this to an artist for a model or reference sheet, or just use it for yourself to make a model. Now that we've talked about the design, let's talk about getting a model. Keep in mind that I'll talk about how much it'll cost to hire someone to do it for you. If you want to do it for free, you can take the time to learn the program and the time to learn how to draw and make it yourself. It's not quick, but that's the trade-off. You spend time learning this stuff to save money, or you pay someone who has already spent the time to learn it. And just because I may mention something being more affordable or cheaper than another, it doesn't devalue either. Cheaper options don't make you any less of a VTuber, and the pricier ones are just more of an investment. The first type we have is PNG, which is a static image on screen. They tend to cost between, could be free to up to a thousand dollars. The average is probably around 80. It has zero to very limited range of movement and it's very uh, minimal taxing on the PC. Live 2D. A 2D image is applied to a partial 3D mesh. The cost for these can range between free for do-it-yourself to up to $4,000, and that includes both the art and the rigging, as they're usually separate. The average is about $1,500. The range of movement is limited to moderate depending on the rigging, and depending on the rigging and the program, it can be moderate to fairly taxing on the computer. 3D. Uh, they can be anywhere between free to $10,000. The average about $2,000 for a custom, or an average $200 for one that comes from a base, such as Vroid Studios. Its range of motion is very moderate to full motion depending on the tracking and hardware and software. And it's fairly taxing to extremely demanding on your PC depending on the range of tracking. Now let's talk about each type. A subset of VTubers are PNG tubers, which are those that want to be VTubers, but usually with computer GPUs that can't handle a game plus a tracking program. There are times that even those with 3D and Live 2D use PNGs, be it out of laziness or to save their GPU, or maybe just for collabs. There are two ways of being a PNG tuber. These usually have no tracking to only audio tracking. Using a still image on your streaming software, you can either draw one yourself or get one from free from places like Pick Crew and Kara, or you can commission one at various price points depending on the artist. Be sure that they understand that it's going to be used for VTubing and not just a personal image to have in your collection. They may want a commercial rights fee. Another way is to use reactive images. This allows you to switch between two or more images depending on the program used and usually reacts to your microphone to switch from an image with a mouth closed to open. The cost point for the art is about the same as before, but here are a few programs that can be used. V802 Mini. This program you can download from each.io and costs what you're willing to donate. It's worth donating at least five bucks to at least, at least, at least. It lets you use up to four images, a mouth open with the eyes open, a mouth closed with the eyes open, the mouth open with the eyes closed, and the mouth closed with the eyes closed. <laughs> it takes and mimics your character blinking and talking. The next two are very similar. They use Discord and OBS integrations and are often used for collabs by VTubers. But this means you have to be in a Discord voice chat. You can always make a private one, or it'll light up or switch images when it sees you talking. The first is Discord React Images Fungi Tech. You log on to your Discord and you select the inactive to active image and apply. Then there is a browser source you add to your OBS. Uh, you can even do this with a group of people. I've had issues with this one myself, so I don't use it that often but I've had friends that swear by it. The good thing about this program and the next program is that they are browser-based, so you don't need to download anything for it. The next one is Discord Stream Kit. This is the one that I use, and it's a bit more complicated than the others, but not by much. In this one, you put a browser source for a voice widget in your OBS, and then in the custom cascading style sheet, you can add two reactive images in their Discord ID. With this one, if someone leaves the VC, the avatar will also leave the screen. To enhance these programs, you can also replace the PNG with an animated GIF. You can either make them or commission them yourself. 
That way the non-active, not talking, can just be a blinking animation. And when active or talking, you switch to the character's mouth moving. It gives it much more of an interactive feel. Keep in mind, the order I picked to present these are decided on the range of hardware and software available to them in the complexity of the setup, not really creating them. And when it comes to live 2D versus 3D avatars, I do not think one is better than the other. They are just different. Live 2D is created using Live 2D Cubism. This program has a free 42-day trial and then a limited-use version. The full access is available for about $20 a month or $130 a year. This program was originally used for games but quickly was adopted by VTubers. You can see it in games like Twisted Wonderland. It allows you to apply a 3D mesh to a 2D image, making a veritable 2.5D character. The art for a Live 2D isn't as simple as regular artwork. Everything needs to be cut up for each side and labeled. For example, for an eye, you'll need to have the right upper eye line, the right eye crease, the right eye lid, the lower eye line, the right closed eye, the right sclera, or the whites, the right iris, the right eye highlights, the right eye closed. And now do all this for the left side, and that's just the eyes. So you'll often see commission prices for Live 2D run anywhere between $500 to $2,000 or more depending on the complexity. Because if you wish to have your character parts move, such as flipping a hand from palm to knuckle up, the artist will need to draw some transition frames or else it may look a little peculiar. However, this is a skill you can learn with time if you don't want to pay someone else to do it. Remember, the cost you're paying is for the time they spent learning and honing their skill as well as the work done on your model. You can easily bypass this by doing it yourself. I learned how to use Live 2D Basics in about a month or two with constant adjustments by following Brian Sui's tutorial. Forgive me if I mispronounced your name. Hiring someone to rig your Live 2D could cost anywhere between $800 to $2,500. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Again, depending on the complexity. Applying the rigging to the artwork is quite time consuming as well. You have to apply to a mesh between, for each piece of artwork and then you have to set parameters on each. You are given points to where you can move the mesh between the parameters and deform them to give the appearance of animating. With this in creativity you can really trick the eye into some full and creative movements, but it's fairly complex. However, if you'd like to try it for yourself, Brian has offered a discount code towards Live 2D Cubism Pro for one or the three year subscriptions for 15% off. I'll include the code on screen and down below. He also has a Discord that'll help you out. Uh, hashtag not sponsored. Also, if you're a student, you can get 76% off a three year plan, which is cheaper than a one year plan. Let's say you went with Live 2D. Let's talk about programs you can use with your model. I'm only going to include a few, but there are more. I'll supply a link below with a document courteously supplied by Skiyoshi that has more information on other programs for Live 2D, PNG, and VRM or 3D. Base Rig is probably one of the older known tracking programs for Live 2D that it does require a Live 2D DLC. The base program costs $14.99 plus $3.99 for the Live 2D DLC. Keep in mind, they do have a personal creator's version for VTuber. This is a commercial version of the program is required by them if you plan on monetizing, which costs about $450. But I know some VTubers that talked to FaceRig in 2019 and 2020 said that they need the more expensive version if they're planning on making any money with VTubing and not just a certain level of the money. I do think they moved to animes, but I've never used it for live 2D, only 3D, which I do not recommend. As for face rig, once you get your model into the program, it has a good number of sliders that help you fine tune the tracking to your needs. PRPR Live is a program I haven't used too much. It is free and it's simple enough to use, and although it does have some menus that aren't in English, it is easy enough to navigate. The program does offer some DLC to enhance your streaming interactive experience. The base program has a few basic sliders to help you configure your tracking. 
But if you want more precision and control, they have the Animoji DLC for $9.99, which isn't too bad considering the base program is free. BTube Studio program is currently the most popular live 2D tracking program I know. The program is free and comes with a watermark which you can pay a DLC to remove for about $15. It's easy to use to load in and to load in the model. They have a fairly comprehensive configuring menu that allows you to adjust the tracking and physics of your model. This one also allows you to attach accessories on and around your model. I'm not sure if the others have that or not, but this one is known to. It's quite easy to figure out how to use it as well. You can use your webcam to track your movements, or you can use the iOS for a better, smoother tracking of the facial features. They do offer an Android version, but it has less tracking parameters due to the Android's limitations. Now, as I mentioned, there are many more programs out there, but I grabbed three I know of, and most of you have probably heard of. On top of it, there's plenty of tracking programs in the works to mimic full body movement with Live 2D, even program add-ons to track drawing, although your model has to be rigged in a particular way for these to actually apply. But now that we've touched on Live 2D, let's talk about 3D. 3D models can create a variety of ways in various formats. Different programs require different formats, but usually they can be converted between them. On top of that, there are multiple programs that create 3D models ranging from simple character builders to powerful and complex 3D modeling software. 3D models do offer a wider range of motion, depending on your tracking, to similar styles to the movement ranges of a Live 2D to walking around in 360 VR space. Let's talk about more common 3D models. Bikatsu is a free character builder game that lets you track your models inside of a program. You are limited by the options of the program, and the program itself doesn't really offer means to export or use it in other programs. It's fine beginner program if you're on a budget and don't have much in the way of artistic skills. I've never met anyone to offer commission on these avatars since it's so simple to use for yourself. So ultimately the price of this would be free. v Studios is a free program, similar to the Katsu in that it's a character builder meant for VTubers. This one offers much more freedom. It allows you to customize your outfit, hair, and textures within the program and explore it pre-rigged. Current version has a lot to work around to get past its limitations, but there's an update coming out in the autumn of 2001. It is very common to see this one in the 3D VTuber community. It allows those with minimal knowledge on modeling and texturing to create very lovely models. It does have a downside of not being able to adjust body types or add animal parts without taking it into another program. The program itself also isn't very optimized. I've seen prices of commissions for Vroid range about 175. I've seen them as low as 20 and as high as 800, but it really does depend on the artist. There are also shops like Booth that let you buy pre-made assets to help create characters to your liking. Blender. Oh, I hate Blender. Blender is a free 3D modeling software that can do so much more than just model and rig. This program does have a very steep learning curve, however, and it takes quite a bit of time to learn and even more to become proficient at it. This also is the program used by most, sometimes with ZBrush, that 3D modelers use for their commissions, which tend to run between $1,500 and $4,000. Sometimes even much more than that, depending on what you want your model to do and the detail and complexity. Along with Blender, there are other 3D modeling programs, like Mayan, Unreal Engine, and ZBrush use with Blender, and quite a few more, but due to the limit and the length of this video, let's just stick with these three. So you went with 3D modeling, and now you want to track it. Well, this is the part of the video I've been least looking forward to. Tracking 3D models can be done so many ways, but let's talk about the hardware before jumping into the software. Mouse and keyboard. There are programs that will track with just your mouse and keyboard movements, giving the illusion of actual tracking. These are particularly good if you're in a position a camera can't track you in. Webcam. You can track just using a webcam. It will result in something similar to Live2D and where it will track your mouth, eyes, head, and upper body movement. 
Many use this style of tracking as it's one of the most easy on the PC while still allowing some interactivity. These are fairly cheap and I recommend one at least 720 or better in a well-lit room. When there is a tracking issue, it's usually from the lack of lighting than the actual camera itself. Leap Motion Leap Motion is a hand tracking program that many 3D tracking softwares use to track the hands. It will track how far your hand is from the device and move your fingers in tandem with your own. This product is somewhat a bit harder to find nowadays with prices ranging between $80 to $140. This is an add-on device usually used with the webcam. Toby Eye Tracker Toby Eye Tracker is a device that will track your eyes and I think now can move your head movements with multiple cameras. The cost is about $220. I have not seen very many programs actually incorporate the Toby Eye Tracker, but there are a few that do. The iPhone. The iPhone X or better has been making its rounds as an alternative to an expressive tracking. It offers a wider range of expressions and movements, and this applies to some live 2D tracking programs as well. Depending on the app, you can even get upper body movement, but this is usually an add-on as you need to link it with your PC for streaming and content creating. You can get them used for about $300 up to over $1,200 depending on which phone you get. The Vive Trackers. If you have a Vive, you can get their trackers to give you more range of motion. Usually three trackers will give you a six point tracking, including the head mount and two hand controllers. You can apply the trackers to the back and the feet, and when you move, the program will do its best to figure out where you are. The more trackers you add, the closer to full body tracking you get. Vive costs up to $1,400 with each tracker running $100 each. Trackers can also be added to particular programs to be used with the Toby Eye Tracker, but you don't need to be in 3D space. I think Vive trackers also can be used with the Oculus as well. Perception Neuron. For full body tracking, there are plenty of suits, but the Neuron is the cheaper alternative, and don't let the word cheap fool you, it still costs between three to $5,000. It also comes with 17 body trackers, so there's no guesswork by the computer to think where certain points are supposed to be. This is a closer to movie production level of tracking. This device will track your movements, but you'll still need a program to track your facial expressions. I've heard of these being used in combination with Unity, but I have never used one so I don't know the full details on them. I didn't include specs for any of these since most of them have different versions with different requirements. It'll be up to you to do your own research on exactly what you're looking for. That being said, these are some of the basic devices needed for tracking on various levels. Next we're going to look into tracking softwares. I was trying to stick to three in each category, but this will require a bit more since there's such more variety. I'll be dividing it into non-tracking, which are those that don't use real-time tracking, upper tracking programs that track mostly just the face and the head, and then full body tracking. And I'm only giving a couple examples of each. I wasn't really sure what to call this as these programs do offer some tracking, but have the option to only track using a keyboard and mouse, so I'm adding them into this category. BDraw is the first one, which has three mode types, typing, drawing, and gaming. It will position your character in various poses and track them slightly different. The typing will get your character moving its fingers and hands on the keyboard and pointing when you use your mouse. In drawing mode, your avatar will move up and down depending on where your cursor and pen is on the screen or tablet. In game mode, your model will be using a controller and push buttons accordingly to what your controller is using. You can have the program track your audio for lip tracking and you can turn on a webcam for face and body movements. VDraw costs about $10 at the time of making this video. VMagic Mirror is similar to VDraw, but I'm not sure about its modes. I know a lot of people swear by this program and I myself have had no luck with it, so I haven't been able to use it. But I do know it has a typing mode and the ability to turn the camera on and track even with iPhone integration from what I hear. It is also free, but as I've never had any luck getting the program to play nice, I can't really review its features beyond this. 
VCFace is one of the most common 3D tracking softwares for VTubers, and it's completely free. It allows you to put your avatar into the program, select a webcam, and go. It tracks your mouth and face or audio tracking. You can even connect Elite Motion for hand tracking. There are ways to connect your iPhone to it as well. VC Face also has its own avatar format that allows you to use custom animations and shaders from Unity, as well as having 3D environments. This is my personal go-to, as it's the one I recommend for most people to use because of the ease of use. VC Face has recommended settings that will run a system benchmark to adjust your tracking quality and frame rate to give you the best possible quality without killing your CPU. It's quite handy for those trying to be a VTuber on their parent's toaster. I'm not really too familiar with Suva, but I know that certain creators have used it in the past and really like it. Suva originally converted your VR chat models into trackable avatars for VTubing. This is the main tracking program that uses Toby Eye Trackers with Steam VR and trackers to position your hands. The program costs $1 and has been worked on and still up being updated. I can't really say much more on this program as I haven't really used it, but those who have seem to enjoy it. I wanted to include it as an option for the Toby Eye Tracker, as I don't know another program that uses it. There are other programs out there like Luppet, and Mitane, and Wakaru, and many more. Too many to list, actually. What about Vup and Animes? Animes and Vup are terrible programs, and I'm not going to cover them. I wanted to include one program that is meant for the Neuron Suit, and although there are ways to use this with Unity and VC Face, it means using a third party means to connect the two, so I didn't want to really include that. But usually, tracking suits like this come with their own programs as well. This one, however, is one you can look into, and I believe it is free. Live is a program that allows you to put your character into 3D games. You can use as little as the base VR system or add trackers to move around better. It also lets you track your mouth movements through audio capture. VR Chat is a game, but within it you can go to specific worlds or create your own and record using them. If you find a private green screen world, you can use that to track for streaming, or you can just do it right in a scene itself. Unreal and Unity. Another option to track is using Unreal and Unity, but these require you to use virtual motion capture which you'll need to learn how to create environments in the world. It's more of a complicated but more customizable option. Also, Unity and Unreal are free. Virtual motion capture has a free version and a Patreon version. I know there are other programs out there, but to keep this video under an hour, again, I'm going to have to limit which ones I talk about. Well, I often get asked what my setup is, so here you go. This is my setup. My webcam is a Logitech C270. I bought it at Walmart for less than $30. <laughs> my microphone is an Audio Technica Cardinoid Condenser. I use the iPhone XR, Leap Motion, VTube Studios for Live 2D, Vroid Studios to make 3D models, VC Face to track those models, VDraw when I draw, and I use Streamlabs OBS for now for recording and streaming. I also have a Vive headset with three Vive trackers and Valve Index controllers for when I go into 3D space, and I use that with the live program. I also have Antline wireless microphone for when I'm in VR. My model was made in Vroid because I like to change my clothes on a whim, and I hate Blender. Do you need all that? Of course not. As you can see from this video, there are a variety of options out there that are from affordable, under a hundred dollar range, to investments, a couple thousand dollar range. It's really up to you how much money you would like to invest into being a VTuber. It's always possible to start out with some free programs and slowly work your way up. A lot do that. Slowly grow, slowly upgrade until they can afford more expensive options. I did not start out with this setup. My setup was just my base PC with Live 2D and Face Rig. I do hope this video, however, has helped you out. If you would like a part 3 which talks about setting up OBS or Streamlabs OBS for VTubing, let me know in the comments below. Please give this video a like and a share because it took a lot out of me to make it and it really helps me out with the algorithm. Also, a big thanks to those who helped me in this video. 
uh, which is Skiyoshi, Charlie, Harune, Emiliana, Brian, Ron, Yuikai, Maple, and my husband, Noah. I'll put their links down below. And a shout out to all channel members. You guys are awesome. Because of you and your support, I'm able to make videos like this and be a VTuber. You guys are rad as fuck. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and bye!